Bluebellies incoming, Sarge! A gallant gentleman, a professional military education, and a hero for their soldiers. Those are the fighting men of the U.S. Officer Corps. The majority of soldiers during the Civil War were enlisted men. They made up the bulk of the fighting force. Above them were the so-called non-commissioned officers like sergeants, first sergeants, or sergeant majors, which also drilled the enlisted men and made them ready for battle. Periods, the NCOs were the commissioned officers. While those officers had more prestige than regular privates, they also carried added burdens, since they were accountable for all the soldiers under their command. The rank of a commissioned officer was displayed on the shoulder boards. No insignia for a second lieutenant, one gold bar for a first lieutenant, two gold bars for a captain, a gold oak leaf for a major, a silver oak leaf for a lieutenant colonel, a silver eagle for a colonel, and one, two, or three silver stars for a general, depending on his seniority. One of the most important ranks on the battlefield was the colonel. A colonel had the command and administrative duties for a regiment, made up of varying numbers of companies. The colonel was expected to lead his regiment into battle personally, to ensure that it performed to its utmost ability. For this reason, colonels were often killed or wounded in action. The rank insignia for a colonel is an eagle, which is a stylized representation of the eagle dominating the Great Seal of the United States. He is also equipped with an 1850 U.S. foot officer sword, which is not primarily a weapon, rather it is, above all else, another insignia of his rank, a sign of his authority and a tool to command his soldiers. At close combat, the colonel will use his Colt revolver to defend himself. Now it's up to you, soldier. Will you join the ranks of the common soldiers? Or will you lead your boys to victory? See you next time at the Fighting Men of War of Rights.